In Soul Artifact is an amazing card that can have you dealing five damage as early as turn two, and it gets absolutely nuts. Being able to turn any artifact into a big, beefy creature is absolutely amazing. So that's why today we are going to go over a really nice deck list that I have crafted, as well as get a bunch of tips and tricks about perfect synergies that the deck has, and then jump into a long win streak that you guys, I think, will be really excited to see. Now, let's get right into it. So starting off with our list, we're going to first understand in Soul Artifact the main card that we're building around in this deck. It's a 2 mana enchantment aura and you enchant an artifact. When enchanted artifact is a cre enchanted artifact becomes a creature with base power and toughness 5/5 five, five, in addition to its other types. So any artifact in the list can become a 5/5 five, five by enchanting it and that's really the whole way we're going to go about it. Now, as a backup, because running just a 4 of a main effect that you want, we're going to need a backup option to do that. So that's where the skilled animator comes in. Also an uncommon, so you can build this deck fairly well on a budget, but the skilled animator effectively does the same thing. When it enters the battlefield at 3 mana, target artifact you control becomes an artifact creature with base power and toughness 5-5 five, five, as long as skilled animator is on the battlefield. Now with those two play sets of cards in mind, let's start to take a look at the huge list of artifacts and how we're going to use them. So some great things that we can do in the deck. Let's talk about the most exciting plays first. We're running one copy of Lizard Blades, and this is just because even though it's a two drop and it's slightly slower than everything else in the deck, it has double strike. So it's actually pretty crazy because that's 10 damage swinging as early as turn three whenever you get this thing rolling. Also, another great card are both of our one drop flyers. So we have four copies of Network Disruptor, a common, and that's just because it's a one one flyer for one that becomes a five five flyer, which is absolutely insane. So this and along with the Silver Raven, just another common 1-1 one, one flyer. Either one of these, if you drop these on turn one, follow it up with an Soul Artifact, you're swinging for five damage in the air on turn two, and that's really, really where the deck can shine. Now, we also have four copies of Ginger Brute, not flying, but for just a single mana, this card becomes effectively unblockable because only creatures with haste can block it, and that's so, so few things in the meta. Now, just rounding it out, we obviously need some card draw and some interactions and things like that. So, we are running three Curious Obsession. You know, I got to thinking as I was playing this deck, and I tried playing some heavy top-end cards, like big card draws like Memory Deluge, but that didn't really fit with what we were doing. But we have so many little evasive creatures, it really works well with Curious Obsession and, and plays out a lot of times actually like a tempo deck anyway. And so the Curious Obsession as a three of has become, I found to be really effective as our card draw engine. Also, Experimental Synthesizer is a nice little combo because when it enters or leaves the battlefield, we get to exile the top card of our library and we can play that until end of turn. But it's also a great card. You play this for one mana, you exile that card, and then you can in Soul Artifact this Synthesizer, making it a 5-5, and then if they do remove it, you get to effectively draw a card. So the Synthesizer also works super well as a card draw slash another target for the in Soul Artifact. And then Voltage Surge is the best removal spell you can have in an artifact deck. It deals 2 damage. If we really need to get up to 4 damage, we can sacrifice any of these mini artifacts we have. We also have our 1 piece of Grave Hate slash just big creature for a big blocker. 1 copy of Unlicensed Hurts uh, can put in a lot of work. You don't really ever want to draw 2 of them, so that's why we're just running a 1 of. But it can absolutely hose those graveyard decks and also can just sometimes be like an 8-8 blocker or attacker that ends up finishing the game. And then just a bit of a pet card in the list could potentially be changed out, but I love having an Ember Cleave. There's a lot of times where we're set up, we have one insold artifact and like maybe three of these 1-1 one, one flyers or including a Ginger Brute. And then we slap this on our 5-5 five, five flyer and it's absolutely nights out, lights out, game over. Another super key card for the deck, which also came out of the Explorer Anthology alongside the insold artifact, is four copies of Darksteel Citadel. So this is an indestructible artifact land. Probably should have mentioned this earlier in the video because it is super important, but you can actually in Soul Artifact on the Darksteel Citadel and then you have a 5-5 five, five indestructible and the only way that they get to interact with it is if they can get rid of your in Soul Artifact. Along with that, we are running just 22 lands four of them being the Indestructible Colorless Land, and I'm just running all of the dual lands I have, so I have four Steam Vents, four Pathways, and then also made room for one Atawara and one Sokanzan, just because those can get you that extra value. So that is the entire list. I'm really excited to show you. 
Now, before we jump in, we're going to implement three side quests. So these are little mini missions that we're going to try to accomplish with this deck. And they're just kind of fun things to look for in the video. So number one, I want to in soul artifact on a lizard blades. That's honestly the best feeling in the world. And then I want to do uh, damage with them in some way. So side quest number one is to in soul artifact on the lizard blades and get to attack with it. Now, number two, I also want to insole Artifact on an Experimental Synthesizer and have it die in combat for maximum value. And number three, just because I love it, I want to win a game using the big surprise Embercleave. So those are our three side quests for the day. Let me know right now in the comment section if you think I will do zero, one, two, or all three of these. But without further ado, let's start jumping into some games and see how this deck really runs on the ladder. Ooh, okay, right off the bat, we have a really awkward hand being all blue here. We could play this out, but in my experience, if you don't have both colors, it really bites you in the butt unless you have some way to draw cards coming up. So I do think we are going to mulligan this one. Not great start, but now we can see I think that was worth the risk because we're going to be able to go turn one. Sorry, my dog is trying to lick my face right now like a weirdo. We're going to go turn one synthesizer into a turn two artifact. And I think we can even toss a land here and do this exact play twice. So let's do exactly that. Playing the Synthesizer turn one doesn't feel great because you essentially just waste this card. Probably kind of fine that it was a land there. But we are going to get the Synthesizer up, turning on a potential of that very first side quest being completed if this thing can die in combat. Or I would honestly even count it if this thing dies to a removal spell just because it's a fun little play. So let's see if we can accomplish that. And here we go. They have one land out and we just hit them for five. This is where the deck can really shine. So super excited for this very first game here. Going to go quite nice for us, I think. Let's start off with the synthesizer just to see if we draw another land off of it. We do not, so let us see. We could go ahead and fire this up with the Artifact, with the Ensoul, which might be okay, but it also can't attack this turn anyway because it did still enter this turn. So I think I want to get my full value and get my Prototype out. Let's go ahead and get five more damage. And then let's just fix our colors a little more and put this in tapped. And then next turn, if they don't play a creature, we've actually just got the win because of the second Ensoul Artifact. So they do get down a very, very tricky card here. So that is going to be a problem, as we don't really know what to do. So I think the play will be to put on maximum pressure. Let's fire up this synthesizer, swing in for five damage so that we're one swing away. And then if we can just find a flyer to go along with this skilled animator, then we're going to be fine. This also completes our side quest number one. Dun, 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 dun. Let me know if you thought that one was going to be possible. And we'll just hold on. To, I guess we'll go ahead and put this down. We might want to do that, I guess, create the two spirits. We'll go ahead and put it down and give ourselves four mana. And we are just a flyer or unblockable creature away from the win. Probably playing against a fight rigging deck, I would guess. That would be my guess since we see the riding, rotting Registor. I do love that deck. And that is a problem. So, until the end of turn. So sadly, we're not going to get to play that. Okay, this is perfect. We get to put this down, and then we are going to hold back just so they don't see how big of a threat it was. We're going to try to trick them into playing something else big, and it looks like actually they are some kind of dinosaur tribal. I guess that makes sense since they name, named dinosaur, but that is going to be enough. We snug it past them. They didn't go removal, so we get to turn the Disruptor into a 5-5. Five five. And while we couldn't have lasted very a lot longer, we are able to still seal up the win with this very cool deck. Great start for turn one. We got a side quest done. Let's keep going and see what else we can do. Okay, a pretty interesting start here. We have two Dark Steel Citadels in hand. And also we could go for the Silver Raven turn one, followed up by a Curious Obsession. I think despite not having red, that's a good enough play to get us some card draw. And especially going first, being on the play, I think I'm willing to risk that to draw a card turn two and hopefully get a couple card draws off of this Obsession by putting it on a Raven. So I am gonna take a risk here. Like I said, not having colors is pretty awkward in this list. Um, but we've got several blue cards that we are going to have access to. We have the Darksteel Citadel, which is a great setup card. 
Um, so, so that's why my logic is telling me we're okay to go with this. So we're gonna go blue side here, drop down that raven, getting to scry one, actually going to be pretty nice here. Do we want an unlicensed terse? Because we don't know the matchup, I think we just toss it to the bottom. I'd rather have an insole artifact or even something that can give us a red mana source. So I think for now we're going to toss the hearse, especially this early in the game, and we don't know if they're a graveyard deck anyway. So I think we're fine to pass on that. So I think this is a great time to mention, if you're still watching this video and you are enjoying it, please consider subscribing. I play nothing but Explorer decks on this, uh, on this channel and I think you might enjoy it, and it really, really, truly does help out the channel. So, please subscribe if you're interested in that. All right, now, before I put down another land, let's go ahead and get the Curious Obsession going here. It looks like we're playing against a cycling deck, quite fun. We will go ahead and draw this card, put down the colorless, which does really hurt with all this colored mana out here, but that is going to be okay. Can we race against this cycling deck? We're about to find out. The fox is pretty nice. It can grow and be kind of a problem. Luckily, we will be able to potentially Voltage Surge it if we can draw a red source fast enough. Now it's going to get pretty awkward because it would require us to also sacrifice something. So this is a little unfortunate. Let's go ahead and draw that next card first thing. Yes, we will draw a card. Okay, that makes me feel better. I want to leave this Voltage Surge up. It's going to be probably too late to hit the Fox, but I think we save it for any other threat that they play. So we've got basically one blue mana to work with. Let's get down another Raven. Let's scry. Look for an Insul Artifact. Double Voltage Surge. I don't actually think that's that important here. I think we really want to get this guy to five so that we can really start smoking down on with six damage in the air, I think would be ideal. So, the, the problem with the cycling deck is once you get a card out like this, you really, really do um, need to keep cycling cards, but then that spends all your mana when you're not playing out threats. So that's a bit of a problem. Okay, two life, is that more of a problem than the fox? I am considering um, bolted surging the, the uh, fox now, especially since it's gonna end at four. But gaining life is also kind of a problem. This is a tough call. The fox also will eventually grow to be unbeatable. So let's just do it like this. Let's hit the fox and then let's actually keep both of our creatures out. And let's get rid of this colorless mana since we can replace that anyway. I think that is a good enough play. The healer will gain them a good amount of life. But it's also, oh yes, there we go. That's exactly the kind of thing we're looking for. So let's actually insole this Raven because it's already able to attack now. And now we're really, really putting a lot of pressure on. Love to see that. Take that action. Now we've got another land. I'm feeling super, super good about this game. What do you guys think? Okay, we see a mountain. I mean, they're just really, really behind. They're not going to be able to do that much. They can maybe buy themselves an extra turn here. Uh, but we've got seven damage coming at them this upcoming turn. They're going to need to gain a lot of life to get out of that. Now they could eventually pull off a big Zenith Flare, which could, is probably the win con for them at this moment, but I still think we're kind of okay in what we got going here. Okay, they did gain a lot of life, cycle a lot of cards, so that was really good. So maybe they can gain even a whole nother turn's worth. Okay, this though is going to help a lot. So I want to, you do have to be careful when you tap your mana on this. Sometimes they will try to tap your Citadels, actually pretty much always when you want to animate it. But we want to be doing this, and that is another win. Hey yo, we got the Citadel. What an amazing play. Let's keep going into game three. So a great start so far for the deck with those two wins. Um, We've got several Ravens that can fix this here, and we've got all our colors, so this might not be the best hand, but I do think it's one worth keeping, especially having all of our colors, plus getting that Citadel early is great. So let's start off with our blue and get our Raven to fix us. Hello, I always love getting started off with a nice hello insult artifact. We love to see that. So this is going to work out probably if our Raven doesn't get removed here. And that's probably going to be a pretty sweet start for us. I also am considering they probably have a fatal push playing black. So I think our play actually 
is to drop the Citadel, and we're going to animate this bad boy next turn, and then we're going to just go ahead and scry one more. I'm going to assume they've got that early interaction being in uh, red and black. Also, could be another Grease Fang deck. Do we need this third, this fourth land? Probably not a priority. Let's send that to the bottom. Let's get in for our chip damage. And then I'm also feeling pretty good now. Also, probably another Grease Fang deck, so I probably want to be on the hunt for a Voltage Surge. Um, just to guess. Doesn't have to be. Okay, I take that back. This is Treacherous Blessing enters the battlefield, draw three cards. Whenever you cast a spell, lose one life. When it becomes the target of a spell or ability, sacrifice it. So I'm not exactly sure what they want to do here. Ooh, now I have a decision. I could also try to animate the Lizard Blades, which was part of our big decision of what we wanted to do. I think we make the earlier tempo play and put it on the Citadel. Um, okay, I think we want to get the Citadel going. I think that makes more sense. Even though this is a side quest and I really want to do it, we can put this down as basically just a nice backup option. So, still feeling pretty good about that. We're putting a lot of pressure on. Not sure what they're doing. Maybe it's the Demonic Pact. At the beginning of your upkeep, choose one that hasn't been chosen. It deals four damage to any target and you gain four life. Target opponent does two card, draws two cards. Okay, so this is a sacrifice your own enchantments kind of thing for sure. We have seven damage on the board. Eight if we put out the Ginger Brute. No way else to really get much else going. Let's start with the Synthesizer and look for a land. Unlicensed Hearse. Not worth putting this down for that. Let's just put down another Raven and then get our attacks in. Another Raven, another Artifact. Okay, that will honestly probably seal this game up for me. Um, I'm thinking we're probably okay. They can gain four life, which actually might save them a whole nother turn. And they get to get rid of one Raven. Five, six, seven, eight. So they do need to do something else here to hold us off. Because uh, we have exactly eight damage coming with the Ginger Brute. But I'm guessing they're going to start sacrificing these in some way this has to be uh, it could be doom foretold that was a really cool card uh back in the day yorion will do some work here that's for sure exiles those they come back draws three cards that's cool that's a pretty cool play i will admit that uh but we still i think win because we can tap down yorion with the Disruptor, and then put in the Ginger Brute, and then I think we squeeze by for exactly 8 damage. So I think we're fine. So we're going to Disruptor, actually kind of a clutch common when you get a situation like this, and then put the Ginger Brute down just for that one extra, and then swing away to go 3-0 and oh on the day. Really, really rolling. The deck is super, super running well today. Let's just keep going and see how far we can take this. Okay, again, here's that awkward situation where we don't have all of our colors. I, I am always tempted. I'm a greedy player. I'm tempted to go for the Synthesizer, but since we couldn't even play a blue source if we got it off of the turn one Synthesizer, I do think we have to mulligan, sadly, here. All right, another really awkward one um, where we don't have all our colors, but going to five seems so, so bad. I, th I think we have to go to five, though. I don't think we can keep that. Okay, all of our colors... If we can get an artifact going, maybe get the gingerbread going, and then follow it up with an obsession. So I think we're going to keep these five cards and then toss those two. Pretty rough start. This will probably be the game that cost us all of our... Um, that cost us our little, little mini win streak for the day. But that's okay. It's always good to test the limits of a deck and see how well it can do when you're starting off this early. Probably going to get fatal pushed, in which case... We just get absolutely blown out of the water. So let's pay our two life. Let's put down a Ginger Brute. Try to bait out this Fatal Push. Okay, and then we're going to see if we can get lucky. If it is Fatal Push, we just certainly lose. Okay, we might get lucky. I was I was holding back on the Artifact in case they did Fatal Push us. Uh, but if we can draw some cards back... Ooh, okay. If we draw a land and we can insult one of these and get a second Obsession down... We are actually going to be in a position to come back from this game. So, we've gotten a little lucky. We'd have to dodge removal here. 
But if we can dodge removal even for this turn to reload our hand a little bit with double obsession, that could be enough to get us back in this game. I mean, we're not out of it, but starting down seven to five cards is just so brutal. So you're just, you're, your odds go way, way down, especially when you're not playing a combat deck. Okay, there is the removal. That makes sense. I would actually still really love to draw a land here so that we can do both of these plays, to be perfectly honest. Yes, okay. And we've got double blue, so we can make this happen as long as they don't have that fatal push now. If they fatal push us now, we just totally get blown out of the water. But if we can get even this one attack, get another card in hand, we've kind of made a lot of progress. But now if they if they remove this, it's a three for one, and that's super bad. Okay, so we mitigate the removal, getting this a little bit there. And we get to draw a card. Actually looking for anything but a land probably now, but we've been a little lucky on our hits so far. And I am glad that I held back the Insul Artifact. So let's see what they've got for us. We're in a moderately okay position. Now we're in actually what I would call a good position. If we can draw another card off this, feels like they'll have removal. Mono black. Let's see. This is a long waiting period. I mean, there's no thinking about it though, right? If you've got removal, you just pop it off. Maybe they're done. Maybe they're giving up. Okay. Okay. Okay, we've drawn two cards off of this obsession. That's a lot of work. We're about to refill our hand in comparison to theirs. Don't hate the Raven to fix this next draw either. Okay, they gotta dig for an answer now. We have put a lot of pressure on. We don't need another one of those. Let's put this one down in case we get to in Soul Lit. All right, hey, we went five lands. They are either, I mean, they've only played the March and then got rid of this. Okay, Meat Hook. That's fine, actually. Uh, that doesn't even save them, except it might gain them a life. Yep, it gained them a life. It bought them one turn. Uh, but if we get anything rolling... Okay, we're land heavy here, so they are gonna... They bought themselves one extra turn. But having them at one makes me feel real good. We've definitely made up for that. I'll just hold on to that for next turn so that we can reanimate this out of nowhere. I don't want to leave this in a place to be removed. And putting it on the battlefield now doesn't really help us. There is another win from five lander, holy, or five cards mulligan, holy cow. Let's keep the, the win streak alive, 4-0. Oh. Okay. We've got the skilled animator play on turn three. Once again, one color is rough. Something about my gut is telling me to keep this one, though. Just because it's still pretty good to go turn one, brute. Turn two, put down the citadel. Turn three, turn it on with the animator. Let's try it. Let's see what happens. We'll take the risk. Um, we're definitely going to start with... I guess we can start with colorless. Just in case we would draw a different color on next turn. So let's start there. And then if we're lucky, we'll draw a colored source here. Actually, that's perfect. All right, so we got a little bit lucky there. I'm interested in getting down a disruptor just for the sake of things. You actually, funny enough, can't choose no targets, but you can always choose the land you tap with it. So it's just a funny little interaction with the network disruptor and the way it's worded. Um, and then we're actually going to put a lot of pressure on them here. We're going to be able to play the animator next turn. Okay, that's fine. We will discard a Dark Steel Citadel. Go ahead and resolve that. Now, we are in a bit of a weird play here. So, we could put the Dark Steel Citadel out, but then it has to be tapped. So, because of that, I'm actually interested in getting out a Lizard Blades. And then, because they've shown us discard, this is a weird play, they've shown us discard, I could put the Disruptor down, but I really can't dis uh, discard this animator or we probably lose. So I'm gonna hold back the disruptor. It's not gonna gain us that much value right now. Hey, stop that. It's not gonna gain us that much value right now. So we're just gonna hold it back in case they force us to discard. Now they could always thought seize, but just in case they follow up with another Croxa, we're gonna leave the disruptor in hand. And now our next side mission of turning on the lizard blades and animating it 
is within reach. It looks like they're thinking about removing it. Of course, makes perfect sense. Uh, we'll just animate something else. That makes a lot of sense. If we draw a land, I would love that. Okay, it's time to animate something. We need to start dealing some damage. Uh, I am going to choose the Citadel. Because they're at a pretty high life total, I want the indestructibility, even if we have to wait a turn to get there. Now, they can just kill the skilled animator. Okay, that would have happened no matter what we chose. So we had to get that out of the way. Now we are in a pretty awkward position. So they're probably going to start playing Threats. They can even reanimate Croxa fairly soon. Trespasser is a problem. Uh, gets rid of that. Okay, that helps. Now's another big question of what do we hit? Do I save this for another turn? Interesting choice here. I think I really want to start getting in for some damage. So let's put this on the Disruptor. And let's start attacking with that and hope that they're down on removal and that we can uh, outpace them right now. That's our hope. <coughs> our hope is to outpace them with the Disruptor. Playing against a very resilient deck here. They've got a lot of work they can do. A lot of things they can put in. Luckily, we don't need our graveyard, so that at least does not affect us. Another super good card. Both of these are just insanely good value cards. It's going to gain another life. Okay. But we've got five in the air coming. I also like this play. Sneak in two extra damage. We'll tap down this. Let's go and attack for seven. That's nice. Okay, that's fine. Am I interested in sacrificing this for three life? Uh, we've already tapped it, so it's not enough. Okay. We get seven, six now. Ooh, that six might matter. I do want to play this Raven right now to set up our next draw. Could be the difference. Don't need another land. Okay. Now let's see what they've got. If they don't play any more creatures, we've got enough damage on board for the win. Actually, we've got that in the air anyway. So they really need to draw a response here. We we have the win on board as it stands right now. They do have ways they can get around that, though. Like a blood juice thirst. Okay, that does put a lot of pressure on. Okay, we're going to lose some life here. Yeah, that's bad. Okay, that's going to be really nice. Now, I think we actually have the win here. Because we do this, we turn the Raven into a 5-5. Five five, and we get lucky with the math at exactly 6. Holy cow! Guys, this deck is so fun. You got to try it out. Let's, let's get another game. I'm committed to playing until I lose one. Okay, absolutely no shot of keeping this hand. Solo red. We have way too many important blue cards. So this is an easy, fast mulligan. We go to six. Uh, but luckily we know the deck can handle it. Okay, both colors. Great start. And an animator. I think this is perfectly fine. Let's get rid of... Do we get rid of a prototype? Probably the prototype. That's maybe the card I'm least impressed with. Um, and would maybe even consider getting rid of it. Let me know what you would replace it with if you have a card in mind that you would replace it with. Let's go blue. Let's get down our flyer. So this is training. Is this maybe a human's deck? I'm not familiar with this card. Training, if it attacks with another creature that has more power, it gets a plus one plus one counter. And then we see Thalia. Non-creature spells cost one more to cast. I'm guessing this is a human's list. Um, that's really unfortunate the way that works out because we could have been sold this now. So that's frustrating. I guess we'll just put down both of these. First strike is pretty annoying as well. Uh, we'll just get some targets out. I'll take the one damage here and then we can start animating stuff next turn. So that's going to be really good. Yeah, this is definitely humans. First strike, hex from life, plus one plus so as long as the controller as long as a player controls a white permanent. I think we're just basically gonna straight up race here. 
Uh, let's go with another blue. Let's put down our animator, which will animate a ginger brute. And then both of these can attack for six. I think we can race them. They are attacking first. Because they were on the play, which might be the difference in this game. Ooh, yeah, that'll do it. That'll do a lot of work. Gets rid of my animator. That works too. But now we can toss away this animator as a nice blocker. And it actually can block... Dahlia. So that's a bit of a mistake on their part, I think. Because we get this trade for free. Ooh. Is this our win con, or do we just put five on the disruptor and say go? That's a t that's an interesting choice. Um, I think we need to get some damage down now. But that's still three attacks away. Let's put down the Lizard Blades. Put down the Prototype. And is 12 better than 13? It might be the difference in this case. So let's get that one extra damage in. We've seen how that can matter. This might be the L. I'm not feeling nearly as good about this. Now, if they swing out and leave themselves open... And we can ins... Okay. Man! Oh, that's gonna be... That's gonna be it, for sure. Because they're gonna get to force us to discard the insole. That will probably seal the deal. Very nice. Very nice. Now, if we get to Voltage Surge, that could be cool. But I don't really see how we come back from this. Sure. Okay. Six coming at us. I think we leave everything alive. We don't have any good trades. I need the Lizard Blades to live, even though they could trade. No, they couldn't even trade the next. It's got first strike. Okay, we just need a lucky draw here. Okay, that might do it. Um, this, let's see. Submit zero. We get this back. Okay, so here's what we can do. Still not enough. Okay, well, let's attack with the blades. We've got three blockers, and they can only get one through. Okay, they do take a trade. So that's good. Alright, we've got the pressure on. He can't tap out right now. And okay, now he can probably tap out. Okay, it's gonna be super close. Does he just swing out? Yeah, he does. Okay, and we can't take any of these. Yeah, I think that's the L. Um, yep, I don't think there's anything we can get that will save us. This is probably our last game. Let's go ahead and see what our next draw will be. Always wanna play it out, maybe we'll get lucky. Ginger Brew is not going to do it. They did get us. So if you enjoyed this video, check out that video right over there. It's one that I'm pretty sure you will like. I had a ton of fun playing this deck today. It was super, super good. It went really smoothly. Let me know what you think of it on this uh, list. Uh, but let's just let us go here. I will see you in the next one. Have a good day, my friend.